What's up design family and welcome to another episode of Fit Design TV. On today's episode, we have something a little bit different and special from our regular viewing. We'll be looking at the Gucci Jordan and the Brixton loafer lines that Gucci offers. Both are great and chances are if you clicked on this video, you're properly interested in one or both. So I wanted to give you guys my personal experience as a fashion designer, someone who's extremely into shoes and really likes great quality shoes that last a long time and have a lot of flair to them. So in this video, we'll be looking at both the Brixton and the Jordan, describing the pros and cons of each and how they ultimately stack up against each other from a user experience standpoint and a durability standpoint. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around, you're in for a good one. So before we get into the main similarities and differences between both types of shoes, we have to understand what the Brixton and the Jordan mean in the long lineage of Gucci for wear history. Both are modern day adaptations of the classic 1953 loafer, which is actually an adaptation of the loafer idea in general, which originates in Norway. These shoes are a modern take on a classic, whereas the 1953 had a more boxy cut, a more boxed out toe box. These shoes feature much more sleek and elongated toe profile and a silhouette that's ultimately a lot more sharp and modern. They have very similar construction techniques to the original shoes, but they do differ in certain areas. They all feature the classic horse bit Gucci loafer look, which ultimately gets its start from Gucci's equestrian origins. We'll look at these shoes in terms of their construction techniques, and it's also extremely important to note that while these are men's shoes, all these comments ultimately will apply on the women's subset as well. So we'll start off by understanding what the main similarities of both these shoes are. At first glance, they almost look identical. And it's really only when you wear them that you start to see the differences. On the left side here, we have the Jordan loafer in the canvas finish and the standard black leather finish. And on the right side, we have the Brixton, which is in a brown leather and a king snake black leather. Both have a very similar silhouette and both actually feature quite similar construction techniques. They're made out of high-end leathers, and at the same time, they all feature the horse bit detailing on the front. Again, that pays homage to the equestrian start of Gucci. When it comes to the sole, they feature a Blake construction sole, which actually is far superior to standard sole constructions. It features thinner layers of glue and leather stacked on top of each other with a stitch that goes from the bottom of the sole up into the insole and secures the shoe down. What you're gonna get is a more low profile shoe that's gonna be lighter weight and it's going to have a better durability long term than shoes that use a standard glue or like a cement process of attaching the sole to the actual shoe. That's pretty much it when it comes to the similarities. Yes, aesthetics play a big role, but if you're looking at both of these shoes, you wanna know what the main differences are and ultimately why I would go for one over the other. As someone who's had a tremendous amount of experience with both and enjoys both, I can tell you that both have very similar features, but they have very different user experiences. So we'll start off on the right side with the Brixton. The Brixton is definitely going to be the more delicate of both. Yes, it features a great quality cowhide leather as its upper, but the leather is a lot more soft, supple, and it's actually a little bit thinner. So what you'll, notice with, you'll, what you'll notice over time is that these shoes are extremely comfortable. They kind of fit like a sock when it comes to their fit and they conform to your foot extremely well. What I love about the shoe is it's an extremely sleek and low profile shoe, even more so than the Jordan, which can have a bit more bulk because of its stiffer construction, which we'll get into. The Brixton and the Jordan mainly get their differences in the softness and the construction of the leather. When it comes to the Brixton, the intention by Gucci is to have it worn in two ways. The first way is to wear it as a regular loafer, which I love doing, and the second way is to wear it as a slipper. You'll notice on the shoe, it has this welted seam at the back, which serves as a fold line to fold down the heel and ultimately be able to wear it as a slipper. 
A lot of people like doing that. Personally, I don't. Because the, because the leather is so soft, it's quite obvious that over time if you wear like a slipper, you're just going to wear it out a lot faster. I personally don't like that look and at the same time, I don't like the added wear and tear that applies on an already quite delicate shoe. The leather really does feel soft, especially to the touch when you compare the Jordan and the Brixton, you can instantly feel the softness of this leather. Yes, it's a great fit, it almost feels like butter when it comes to wearing it, but it doesn't lend itself to long-term durability, which is a concern of a lot of people, especially at this price point. You have to be very conscious about where you're wearing these shoes. And yes, though both have the same Blake sole construction, it's definitely a lot better place on the Jordan, which in general has a stiffer upper that's going to take a beating at a much better rate than the Brixton. Honestly, when it comes to a side-by-side -side comparison of both the Brixton and the Jordan loafer, what jumps out at you the most is the difference in thickness and structure between both of the uppers. Whereas with the Brixton, you have a more low profile look, a supple leather. The Brixton is a shoe that you want to wear every day, but yet you hesitate to wear every day. There's around a 20 to 30% thickness difference between both shoes. And honestly, I don't know if that's because of a different type of cowhide that's used in both models, or it just comes down to the construction. It's something that really jumps out at you, especially when you pick up the shoes side by side. You can tell that the Jordan is going to be more durable, it's going to be able to take more abuse. That's pretty much my biggest knock of the Brixton. It's a great shoe, it fits like butter, it looks so effortlessly cool and sophisticated, but it's not a shoe that you want to wear every day. You worry about wearing it every day and that is not the experience that you want to have with a high-end shoe, especially if you're paying onwards of six to seven hundred dollars. You don't want to have to second guess where you're going with the shoe. You want to trust that it's constructed in a way that's going to ensure durability and wearability over time. That's where the Jordan really comes in and it shines. It's a shoe that is built. It's built for the, ci for the city. It's built for the street. It's built to take on rain or shine. The Brixton isn't. And really when it comes to comparing them and as a value for money, generally the Jordans are a little bit more expensive but not noticeably. As well with Gucci, it differs between the different stains, colors, finishes, and the pricing can differ from season to season. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the Jordan is more expensive than the Brixton, you should go for the Brixton because it's a cheaper shoe. Or the Brixton is more expensive than the Jordan that you should go for the Brixton because it's a more expensive shoe that that doesn't necessarily work with these lines. They differ in price and they have a lot of variability. But if I was to give you my recommendation, I always feel a lot more confident in the Jordan versus the Brixton because I know it can take the abuse. And with a shoe, you wanna make sure that wherever you're going, you don't wanna worry about, oh, I'm going to have to walk on the street that's not so perfectly paved, or I'm going to be entering this work site, or I'm going to be going to XYZ. Having that extra mental energy you have to expend is not what you want to have when you're purchasing a luxury shoe, especially an everyday loafer. A loafer is a very utilitarian shoe. It's a shoe that you can dress up and you can dress down. And both these shoes do that extremely well. But the Jordan is always going to be my top pick. It's a shoe that I know in four or five years, I can definitely still be wearing if I take care of it. In my experience, these shoes, I don't wear them as often. I love wearing them, but I'm also conscious about wearing them because I do like them. And something like this, which is the King Snake Gucci, it's something that is a limited edition and something that I don't want to wear out too much because I don't know if I can get my hands on it time and time again. So you don't want to have that experience, especially with the shoe. It's not a collector's item. It's a shoe that you want to wear out and you want to wear comfortably. So I definitely recommend the Jordan in terms of its overall durability, its experience. Again, from a sophistication standpoint, from like a aesthetic standpoint, they both have a very similar experience. They can be dressed up, they can be dressed down, and ultimately they both shoes that you're not going to regret from a aesthetic standpoint. From a fit and comfort standpoint, the Brixton's gonna win, it just is. That's the nature of having such a soft and supple upper. But from a durability standpoint, it's a Jordan every day. Um, I wanted to give you guys my experience with that. It's definitely a topic that I've seen asked. I personally asked them. I wanted to know what the main differences between these shoes are. Uh, if you guys think that there are any main differences that I missed, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Let me know which ones you prefer and if you have a specific finish 
if it's canvas or if it's leather or if it's a different type of leather or it's a suede of these shoes uh, i'd love to hear your opinions i'm always looking to um, get into more of these shoes i just love them so much on honestly even the brixton but uh, i'm a little bit more calculated about where i take these shoes versus the jordans so hopefully you guys can gain a thing or two from my experiences if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more of them in the future please feel free to leave it in the comments below obviously we'll come back with our traditional sportswear videos that we love sharing with you guys thank you so much for tuning into fit design tv until next time stay awesome